And many worldly relationships, we're so caught up on how someone else makes us feel, we forget how they feel, how the other person, how our spouses feel. It's it's self, it's self selfish, and um, we have to rid that from us. Yes, so many worldly relationships fail because of selfishness, because they're so caught up in what the other person is or isn't doing and how they're feeling because of what the other person is doing. They're focusing so much on self and in Christ, we're called to do the exact opposite. We're called to focus on servanthood. We're called to focus on the other person above ourselves. And it seems completely backwards. If someone would have told me that years ago, I would have laughed and said, you know, no, I need to do what's best for me. I need to focus on me. And if I'm not getting what I want, then goodbye. But we've experienced hard times in our marriage. And in those hard times, we actually were brought closer because we stuck it out. We stayed together. Mm. We walked in that love of Christ and we chose to walk in that love, to walk in unselfish love. That is the love of Christ. And you don't just give up when times are hard, when someone's struggling, you love them even more. And this is how breakthrough happens. You know, the word talks about, uh, for wives that, the husband will be won over without a word by the godly conduct of the wives, not by nagging, not by telling them what to do or what not to do, but just by your godly conduct and to love them and serve them and, and revere them. And the world d doesn't do this. And you can see the destruction that it reaps. Amen. And, and also, too, you know, before we both came to Christ, you know, there's many times where I thought, you know, I'm providing, you know, I am a good husband, you know, there's food on the table, you know, I do bring joy to you, but it's that ultimate test when things get hard. Am I putting my spouse before myself? When the fire is turned up, what do I do? When, when that trial hits, you know, that's, and that takes practice, that takes, you know, overcoming, and that takes staying in the word, and that's why it says in marriage is imperative, you know, for, for a husband to wash his family with the word of the Lord, you know, be cleansed. So when them trials come, you know, when that tribulation hits, you know, you don't think about self. You don't go, you know, running. You don't run away. You don't fight. You know, you stand. You stand firm in the word and you don't compromise. You know, you put the others before you just like everything else, just like relationships, fellowships, you know, marriages is the root of that. It's a great mystery and it should be emulated with everything. And, you know, children see that, others see it. And just being selfless, having that heart, a servant's heart like Jesus did, you know, to die on that cross for us to have this, to know him and to be selfless in all things. Amen. Like I said, it seems totally backwards because it's going contrary to the flesh. It's going contrary to everything the world tells you. But I can guarantee you, if you take that step and you are mindful and how can I please my spouse? What can I do for them? If you start thinking that and take self out of it, watch how your marriage will change. It might not be overnight. It might not be even in a week or a month. But I can guarantee you from experience, there will be change. And God will break through because this is his word. It's his way. And walking in the love of Christ is powerful so powerful it breaks chains it breaks strongholds it it transforms lives amen so dare to walk in that love and throw self out of it, the equation and just focus on loving your spouse and serving them and remember that love is not a feeling it's not an emotion it's a choice a daily choice and it's something that brings so much joy it should at least <laughs> you know when you walk in that love and and you see the joy that it brings to the other person, too. There's really, there's nothing like it. There isn't. And your marriage will prosper, too. It's going the second mile, turning the other cheek, and being, you know, the good Samaritan, doing, you know, selfless acts, and, and standing firm in that word, you know. And love will abound. Love will overcome. And, you know, at first it does take practice, you know. Going the second mile, honey, can you do the dishes? You know, we'll do, do more of them. You know, can you do this? Can you do that being little things and you know when the thing that you know usually stumbles you comes upon you you'll be ready for it and we've noticed through our marriage how it's grown and through our love the groans that you know when these things come up we notice them quicker and quicker and quicker we recognize them quicker and quicker and we can overcome them because they do you know we we live in the flesh we're supposed to, we are blameless but it's that pressing towards a goal to a perfection you know, and that recognizing these things, these hidden snares, and a lot of prayer too, but washing us with the word, 
standing true to the word, going the second mile, doing, you know, if she asked for me to do something, I'm going to do twice more, you know, because that's what he did. You know, it doesn't make sense. Feelings and emotions might bubble up toward the opposite, anger. And, you know, from a worldly standpoint, you might be justified in feeling this. Like, I'm, I'm pulling most of the load, or she might feel the same way, but, you know, emotions don't matter. Love is a choice, and that we get caught up in that. We start, you know, not by might. Not by strength, but by spirit, because that stuff falls. You know, eventually, five, ten years down the road, you see marriages break up because of that. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing what's right, but it's not, it's not from the heart. You know, it's from a worldly standpoint, and only by His Word and following His Word and Him revealing Himself to us. You know, you know, it's a great mystery being cleaved together, and you know, fellowships too. You can find that in fellowships. There are godly soul ties out there. You know, it's a touchy subject. Well. I don't mean to put a tangent, but it's out there. You know, you, you find that of dying to oneself and serving another person through Christ and through his word, you know, it just blossoms and it's beautiful. And when that snare comes, you know, you know, the Lord reveals it and you just kick the enemy to the side and you give him all the victory and you just see the prosperity. You know, my heart safely trusts her, safely trusts her, you know, as a virtuous woman. You know, and, you know, my aspect as a husband, I provide and I'm supposed to be known. You know, known at the gates because his word elevates me. You know, he sets me on high. He exalts me because I wait on him. You know, it's the head. I'm her head. He's my head. It's just the word. And it makes so much sense. You know, it's it goes against contrary to what the world believes. You know, especially in a lot of marriages that are vice versa. You know, who wears the pants? You know, these are touchy subjects, touchy topics. But you see... The destruction and my parents were divorced you know divorce is prevalent in the society and, they, and that happens a lot you know and it's because of these roles aren't satisfied the husband's not doing his job you know through christ and it's just the breakdown starts at the head you know and it's unfortunate but you know his word is everlasting and his grace is more than sufficient and he restores he restores marriages he lines up you know this this word and this life and he is moving he's moving like never before and praise god Praise God that we have him because we would be lost. I, you know, it would be terrible. I don't even want to imagine where we would be at if we didn't have Jesus. You know, he saved us. He picked us up. We were struggling. I was double-minded, but he washed that from me. He put me up high. And then, you know, I put her up on high, and that's how it works. You know, it's the word. You stick to the word, and you pray. You know, if the word doesn't make sense, you get on your knees together. You pray together. You ask the Holy Spirit to show you, to reveal you. You get a confirmation. You go back to the word. Oh, it's confirmed. Hallelujah. And then you do it. Let's not just listen. Let's do it. Let's prosper. Love abound. Life abundantly. You know, and we, we, we woke up. This morning, we had the same dream. I woke up. I, it was a celebrity. I don't even know. I'm, I'm praying on revelation on it, but it was in the middle of the night. I'm like, okay, I just had the weirdest dream about so, so celebrity. And she said, me too. And it's a great mystery. I don't know how, you know, it's connected. Maybe he's trying to, maybe the Lord's trying to bring him to Christ, you know. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing when you're at one mind, one accord. Yes, unity. Beautiful. It's powerful. And it's not possible if you're walking in self. You need to die to self. You have to. You have to put the other person first. If you're putting yourself first, it'll just bring chaos and emotions, and you'll be led astray every time. But, yeah, no marriage is too broken. Nothing is too impossible for God. God can restore everything. God has completely just changed everything for us, and he's moving like never before, and it's so exciting. So, just, I pray this encourages you and uplifts you. And like I said, dare to die to self and put your spouse first and watch what will change. Because I can guarantee you that God will break through in some way, shape, or form. Because when we follow his word, there's blessing that follows. And he commands us to do it for a reason. Like, he knows what works. And, yeah, it definitely works in our situation. God is so faithful. He is faithful. This is a faithful saying. For if we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. He is faithful. If we deny him, he will deny us. He is ever faithful. If we are faithless, he will deny us. And he cannot deny himself. Let's stay faithful to each other, committed, faithful to Christ, and, and we will endure and reign with him. Amen. Amen. Death to self.